Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a scale trains Rivet Counter EMD SD38 2. This is in EJ, EJ and E Railway, and it's the Fiat number 666. This is a late 1970s to early 1980s era locomotive. Uh, you know, I only know this because I'm so smart about everything that has to do with anything uh, model railroading or real railroading. That's the only way I knew that. But we'll take a look at what's in the box starting next. All right, so scale trains change their style uh, from scaletrains.com to scale trains. Change the box style with it with these mock ups of the locomotive and a more white box. Owner's manual here. It's a tri fold, so it folds out both directions and it's on both sides to some extent. This being the back side. Talks about warranty, functions, control variables. <clears throat> and the whole nine. Excuse me. Inside, standard blister packaging, surrounded by foam, packed nice and tightly, because the less movement the better. And shipment. So, pop this open and pop that off. And there is your locomotive out of the box have truck immobilizers as I call them that also sit in the plastic to help keep things from moving. Just remove the guards here that keep the handrail straight and we'll get to a 360. Okay starting on the front you've got the plow Accessory hoses, airline brake line, hoses there, an MU stand, the stanchions, yellow, and the coupler cut lever is yellow as well, along with some yellow on each stair end here, so that you can get up the stairs. There's a big gap between stairs. I thought one was missing, but that's not the case. That's just the design of the locomotive. <clears throat> you also have a bay window kind of set up as they call it on the cab here where the window is three-dimensional and sticks out. The road numbers below. Old style handbrake is on the front of the nose there along with sand filler hatches. This handbrake, unlike the more modern ones that are wheels, was just ratchet style and it was a rod and you just crank that baby down. Beacon up top, firecracker antenna. Get the blower housing on the side prominently displayed dustbin hatch up top dynamic brake fan grill area the dynamic braking here and the horn is mounted just in front of the radiator fans you've also got that uh, older barcode system that every time I do a review I forget the name of it and every time I do a review people tell me in the comments and every time I forget below on the underbody you do have a bell mounted there there's speed recorders and sanding lines along the trucks and more things to see down there including an emergency shutoff, plumbing to the fuel tank, jacking pad, it's right here, doesn't appear to inhibit anything, radiator fan grills on the sides there. You got your back level or rear side deck with more of the same that we talked about earlier, including an MU stand. Uh, you got uh, classification lights, number boards that are backlit, etc., etc. It's more of the same on this side. And you can see windshield wipers on the back windows as well. Crew access stairs to that door to get into the cab. So it's a quick 360. Let's look at this in operation. 
All right, these are equipped with ESU Loke Sound, so I'll go ahead and start this up by hitting F8. All right, we'll just go through a couple sounds because we've been through many before. <clears throat> and we'll check out the lights. Headlights F0, obviously. One is bell. Two horn. Three couple clink. So there's a few of the sounds. There are 28 functions loaded up here. Five are tricolored class lights, as you can see from the nose edge. Off <clears throat> in green, white, and red, I think. I, I'm, I'm colorblind, <laughs> so you don't want to ask me. But uh, it's tricolored, so each press with F5 will show different. F8 again is shut down. A little hard to tell, but F7 is beacon. It's actually pretty bright, just not very bright in the video because of that really light background. Now with a better angle of the locomotive, we'll move this at one speed step here. Just verifying that all the wheels are on the track. And definitely uh, going to need to be smoothed out at one, two, three. Still have a decent amount of jerk into it. Five, six. Starting to clean up here. Seven, eight. Looks like it. Completely smooths out by eight. We'll go ahead and check what the speed is at one. To move that. This is AccuTrack speedometer. People will say that I'm on kilometers per hour. That's not the case. It's just the design of this speedometer has the LED indicator light at the bottom. The actual miles per hour are set in the setup and that's when a little LED light will pop up next to miles per hour or kilometers per hour. So this is in miles per hour, I promise you that. We're going one in reverse. It is a little smoother in reverse. Still very, very kind of jerky. Uh, what I usually say about that is you need to break in your locomotives, and if it's still like that, you so you need to do back EMF and break in your locomotives. If it's still like that, you know, you can change configuration variables to where speed step one is a little faster. But as you can see, this is 0.7, so it's pretty slow. And it smooths out quicker. So the only reason I show this is basically out of the box, so you know what you're dealing with out of the box. And what you can uh, look forward to and address with your model. All right, we're ready for a pull test on this locomotive. Short axle. It's pulling at 2.6 ounces, which about 35 40 freight cars in HO. So, a couple of these can pull prototypical long consists. You hear the brake squeal there as we slow down to a stop, and you also got to hear the prime mover notch up there. 
All right, I will show you this on a scale real quick. Uh, before I do that, lit number board. Just want to show you that. Really nice backlighting on that. So no shine through. You might have to trust me on this scale. It's hard to see. You can also see it has a capacitor in that's lasting a while. At least a couple few seconds for dirty track there. One pound, 2.4 ounces is the weight. That's 18.4 ounces, 520 grams. So pretty decent weight uh, for this short axle locomotive as well. All right, to wrap this review up, I think this is a pretty nice locomotive. Nice detail, decent pulling power, and ESU, Loak Sound, one of my favorite decoders. Sounds great. It's got a good uh, speaker in it. It also has the ability for capacitor, has a capacitor, so that if you have dirty track for a second or two, it's not going to cut out. With that said, I'll leave you with a run-by. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the channel. Take care.